In lesson 10, we are going to look at parallel lines in a plane. So take a look on page 76. This activity just asks you to start by drawing any non-vertical line. So remember, vertical is up and down. So do not draw a vertical line. And then once you've drawn your line, you're going to draw two translations of that line. Remember that a translation just means that you're going to move it left, right, up, down, any combination of that. So you'll end up with three total lines. And then you want to find the slopes of all of those lines. So go ahead and draw three lines in your book. Um, and Well, draw one line and then do two translations of it. Find the slopes and come back. So there's literally infinite possibilities of lines that you could do. So yours does not need to look like mine. Um, it does not need to be the same as mine. But so you should have started by drawing um, a line. And then to do the translation, it might be easiest if you identify two points on it that you're going to move around. Um, and so then maybe you want to just take and decide that you're going to move these two points um, let me just group them together. So maybe you're going to take these two points and you're just going to move them to the right two units or three units. And then you would just draw another line through that. And let me change the color of those. And then, um, do another one. So maybe you're going to move this one down five, two, three, four, five. So you move both of those points down five, and then you um, draw another line through that. And then um, go ahead and find the slopes of all of those lines. And um, So you can just count the rise over the run for, for each of those lines to get the slope. So we've got up one over two for this one. So the slope of my orange one is one half. The pink one up one over two has a slope of one half as well. And then the green one up one over two has a slope of one half as well. So if you remember back when we learned about translations in unit one, we do know that translations take lines parallel to themselves. So we know that if we do the translation correctly, that we should end up with parallel lines. So all of these lines on here are parallel. Um, and then I got slopes um, of one half for all three of these. Um, so hopefully what you noticed from the slopes of the translated lines on yours was that they were the same as well. Okay, we knew that the three lines that we were drawing were going to be parallel since they were translations. And so it would seem to make sense then if we knew they were going to be parallel and we got all the same slopes that a conjecture about parallel lines could be that parallel lines have the same slope. So in the next activity, we're actually going to look at um, a diagram here. So let's look at it, see what we notice, see what we wonder first. So some things you might have noticed, maybe you noticed that it looks like there's two parallel lines, um, that there are four angles marked congruent, the slopes are positive because they're going up and to the right. There are two triangles that are shaded differently. Maybe you wondered, um, why are the triangles shaded differently? Are those triangles similar to each other? Um, and maybe what are the slopes of those lines? So those are a couple of things you could have noticed and wondered, could have thought of some other things as well. So Priya um, on page 77 has made a uh, proof about this. So she's making a proof about parallel lines to prove the conjecture that parallel lines have the same slope. So she's going to use that diagram sort of that we just saw there. And she said, consider any two parallel lines and assume that they're not horizontal or vertical. So we're going to look at these two parallel lines. 
Therefore, they have to cross the x-axis and the y-axis if they're diagonal. This forms two right triangles. Okay, so we've got these two right triangles here. We know that they're right triangles because um, they are connected by the x-y axis. That is um, a horizontal and a vertical line. So we know these angles in here are right angles. And she says this forms two right triangles with a second congruent angle. Call the angle theta. The tangent of theta, so remember tangent is opposite over adjacent, um, is equal for both triangles. Therefore, the lines have to have the same slope. So this is her proof. Okay, so this is her proof. So let's take a look at this further and see if we can figure out what she's talking about. So how did she know um, that the right triangles have that second congruent angle? So how does she know that theta is the same in each triangle here? Well, you could think of the x-axis as a transversal crossing those two parallel lines. And then if we remember back um, a few chapters ago, we learned that alternate interior angles are congruent. So if we just kind of look at it like this, this angle and this angle are alternate interior angles, and that's what she has marked there. So we know that those would be congruent. That's one way. Um, you could also think about it as corresponding angles. So we could look at it as this one and this one are congruent, and then also knowing that vertical angles are congruent. So that's another way you could have justified how she knew that those two angles were congruent. Um, so show or explain what it means for the tangent to be equal. Because one other thing she said in there was that the tangent of theta is equal in both. So it might be easiest if we, um, in this one, label the sides. So let's just label this as A and as B. So then the tangent is going to be A over B. And then the tangent of the other one, okay, opposite side, let's call it C, and we'll call the adjacent side D. So that tangent is going to be C over D. And how do we know that these two are equal to each other? That's because we know that theta is equal. So we know the tangent of any angle is always going to be the same. So if this angle is 23, okay, tangent of 23, whether it's in this triangle or this triangle, always going to be the same. So since theta is equal, then their tangents are going, then the two ratios are going to be equal. Okay, so then we know that A over B is equal to C over D. So how does that prove that our slopes are equal? So if we look at this top line here, okay, this rise here is A, this run here is B. So that's that tangent, rise over run. This is the slope of one of the lines, okay? So slope of the top line. And then um, C over D, so a similar, th so then we can kind of look at this. Here's the line, rise over run. C over D is the slope of the bottom line. So since we already know that these two are equal because they're the tangents, then we know that the slopes are equal that way. All right, so what happens if the two lines are horizontal? Okay, remember we said don't do horizontal or vertical. Well, we actually said don't do vertical. Um, and then in her proof, she did a diagonal one. So it would cross X and Y axis. What happens if they're horizontal lines? So horizontal lines going sideways. Um, so horizontal lines have a slope of zero. They're not going up or down. And so horizontal lines also are all parallel to each other. So we know that they're parallel. Their slopes are zero. Um, therefore, they follow this kind of same line of thinking that equal slopes make parallel lines. Um, vertical lines are a little bit different. So we still know that all vertical lines are parallel to each other. But vertical lines actually have an undefined slope. So they're not going to follow this same criterion because they don't have a slope. So horizontal lines always parallel, vertical lines always parallel. Um, vertical lines just don't actually have a defined slope. All 
All right, then 10.3 starts on page 78. So let's start off. Um, go ahead and write the equation of a line parallel. So remember what parallel means. We just talked about it. So parallel means that you're going to have the same slope. So write the equation of a line parallel to this one passing through this point. Then graph both the y equals 2x plus 3 and the line that you write. So parallel means same slope. So let's take a look here. The slope of this one is 2. So we'll put 2 into point slope form. And then we also want our line to go through the point negative 4, 1. So we'll do y minus the y coordinate of 1 and x minus the x coordinate of negative 4. So remember that would make this um, basically be plus 4. So let's go ahead and graph both of these. Um, so this orange one is in slope intercept form. So this one we can actually start it at the on the y-axis at 3. So plot the point 0, 3, and then do a slope of up 1 over 2. And actually, this needs to go up a little bit. Okay, so start it at 3 and then go up 1 over 2, or sorry, up 2 over 1 for the slope. So rise 2, run 1, rise 2, run 1. And you can get that line plotted. You can go backwards down to backwards one. Then this line is going to go through the point negative 4, 1. So we'll go to the point negative 4, 1, and then do a slope of 2. So plot the point negative 4, 1, and then up 2 over 1. Keep going and you'll get that whole line. And you can go backwards down to backwards one. Now draw a parallelogram, and you can kind of draw any parallelogram you want here, so it doesn't have to match mine. Um, in the next part, we're going to actually prove that it's a parallelogram, which is going to include finding the slopes. So I am going to draw a parallelogram um, that, has a, that has horizontal side lengths, so I'm going to do it this way. So I'm going to draw this parallelogram. You can draw whatever one you want. Okay, it does want us to use the point negative 4, 1 as one of the sides. Um, but then we can get a parallelogram here. And now you want to prove that that's a parallelogram. So let's prove that the shape that you drew actually is a parallelogram. And remember that parallelograms have um, two pairs of parallel sides. So I'm just going to label... Um, these sides with letters so that we can write down the slopes. So I'm just going to put A, B, C, D here. And so let's find the slopes. So the slope of AB, we're going to want to look at the slope of CD. Those are across from each other. Um, so those ones should be parallel or the same. I'm just going to draw a little M for slope in front of this. And then want to find the slope of BC and also the slope of AD. So we want to find all of those. So the slope of AB would be up 2 over 1, which would make sense because it's one of our sides of our line. CD up 2 over 1 again. Again, makes sense because the slope of the green and the orange are 2. Then BC, so this is a flat line, it's a horizontal line, so the slope of BC is zero. Same with AD, that slope is zero. So these two sides are parallel. Remember that's the um, notation for parallel, you could also write it out. Okay, and then these two are parallel as well. So two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel creates a parallelogram. So that would prove that we drew a parallelogram. All right, then let's take a look at this one. So this one says, so the, um, just talking about, no, this is not in your book, just an overview of the lesson. So if we were to translate segment AC along directed line segment CD, so move it from C to D. So we're going to take this whole segment and we're going to move it from C all the way to D. Okay. 
So notice what happened. Then let's translate AC by directed segment AB, so by this orange one. So now we're going to move the line from A to B. What did we notice? Okay, so hopefully you saw that when we translate it by either of these sides of the parallelogram, it lands on the opposite side. So CD, so the length of CD and the length of AB must be the same because it's landing us in the same spot when we translate um, side AC. So side AC is staying congruent, right? So that's the same exact length the whole time. And then these two lines are parallel to one another. Um, so what does that tell us? Tells us that we have a parallelogram because once we translate this down along that segment, then we would know that these two are parallel as well since it was a translation. And then we could actually find um, the slopes here. So we could count the slopes. So this is up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 over 1, 2, 3. So 12 over 3 for the orange segment, which is 4. And then we could count again um, over here. So count up 12 over 3 for the green. which is four again, um, and then we could count it for AC. So this one is up one, two over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So up two over 14 for AC, which simplifies to one seventh. Um, and then count for BD up 2 over 14. So we end up with parallel and parallel. So opposite sides, parallel. All right, so write this on your reference chart. What we found out and looked at today was that parallel lines have equal slopes. And so we can think about it as a translation. So we know that when we translate lines, we take them parallel to um, themselves. So this dotted, this dashed line here is a translation up two. Um, this dotted line is a translation down four. So all three of these lines are parallel to each other since they're translations. And then we could confirm it by looking at their slopes. So since we know that the lines are parallel, then we know the corresponding angles here um, are congruent because they're alternate interior angles. We looked at that in Priya's proof. So then they're similar. So then they're going to have similar sides. The ratios are going to end up the same. Um, so any two parallel lines that aren't vertical are going to have the same slope. And also um, any two lines with the same slope are parallel. So forwards and backwards. If we know they're parallel, they have the same slope. If we see that they have the same slope, then we know they're parallel. All right, then you can take a look at this cool down. Um, see if you can do it. If you're struggling at all with the cool down, be sure that you reach out to your teacher.